Climbing when you're not inherently good at the game can be a bit of a tilt-inducing clown show. You love the game and you're motivated to play more of it. You even have a growth mindset and you follow the laws of improvement, but nothing really seems to come of it. Sure, you improve a little bit here and gain some elo there, but the whole process seems long and arduous. You're not improving at the rate you'd like to and it makes you feel like shit. All this effort and focus and you're barely, just barely getting something out of it. I know how this feels because that's been my entire experience trying to climb in League of Legends. Even now, I have such a disadvantage when it comes to this game, I have to invest a massive amount of dedication, time and effort just to see any modicum of consistent improvement. There's been so many times where I almost quit simply because I felt like the LP I was getting wasn't worth the effort required. I've had so many mental breakdowns over my 12 years of playing this game simply because no matter how hard I tried and how much I cared, I couldn't seem to progress and climb the way some of my friends did. So in this third and final video of the talent in League of Legends series, we're going to answer the burning questions of the people who've made it this far. How am I actually supposed to climb when I'm not talented? This goes without saying guys, but if you haven't watched the previous installments of the series, I highly suggest you watch them at some point. You don't have to watch them to watch this one, this video is more standalone than my last. But if you like the full rundown on talent in League of Legends, I've linked the full playlist in the top right. I'm going to skip through all the stuff that I've talked about in the previous video and jump straight into the meat of things. How do you climb when bad? The real the secret to climbing as a non-talented player is to increase your mental RAM. Now, there are two upsides to this approach. One is that it isn't mechanically taxing. I'm not asking you to hop onto LOL dodge game and click around for an hour or something. This is something that everyone can do regardless of their mechanical talent. Second is that it doesn't really require any other time commitment on your behalf. The process of increasing your mental RAM is built into your regular schedule based on how you interface with the game. It won't require any other additional time. Increasing your mental RAM works because it's literally what I've been doing to get back into the groove of things before the start of Split 3. After my hiatus, I felt quite far behind in terms of how sharp I was about the game. And the easiest way to get back on top of things is to go on this protocol I'm going to share with you today. Mental RAM is your ability to gather, store, and process information, and it's one of the biggest determinants of skill within this game. It's an S-tier ability to have, guys, honestly, because it allows you to muddle through the near infinite number of colorful bullshit being thrown at your face and find the useful things that's going to make you permanently better in the long term. Earlier in the series, we talked about how the concept of mental RAM and how it's probably the best talent for a League of Legends player to have. Now, for the 98% of you that don't have this ability in spades, we're going to discuss how it builds so you can become a force to reckon with in the near future. Building mental RAM happens in two phases, in-game and out-of-game. Let's tackle in-game first. The first way to boost mental RAM in-game is through playing with high intensity. Playing at high intensity allows you to focus upon key win conditions and important events that take place without missing a beat. It's like a 20% boost to your current levels if you can play at high intensity for like a game or two. If you guys want more information about intensity, I already have a full video on it linked in the top right. It's one of the three biggest factors in LP growth and I think everyone should be using it, especially if you're not a talented gamer like me. Another facet of developing mental RAM is to achieve champion mastery. Right now, part of your mental RAM is being siphoned off into piloting your champion. The more you play it, the better you get at recognizing winning moments for it, and the less RAM you'll eventually take up. Over time, playing this champion will become second nature, and you can actually focus your RAM into other useful shit like tracking important players throughout the game or making the correct macro calls. Similar to intensity, I already have a detailed video on champion mastery linked in the top right. Now, here's where it gets interesting. While in-game mental RAM practice gives you a temporary boost, when you practice mental RAM out of game, it gives you a bigger ceiling. It gives you more mental RAM to work with. This is done in a three-step process. First, you need to have a sufficient amount of high-intensity games. Think of your mental RAM as a hole in the ground. To make the hole bigger, we simply have to spend more time drilling into it. The mistake I made when I was younger was thinking there were shortcuts to boosting your mental RAM through either watching streams of high-level players and or professional matches. While this can help to a certain degree, the most consistent way that's 100% guaranteed to boost your total mental RAM is to simply play high-intensity solo queue over time. It's the slow, grindy, boring way guys, that's the only way we can do this. If you're playing at your correct skill level, you'll begin to familiarize yourself with the pace of the game and start to develop muscle memory for those champion interactions. Once you get used to it, it becomes much easier for you to do advanced stuff like track enemy jungler and you'll begin to see the game in a much more complete light. With this being said, games aren't the only factor in increasing your mental RAM. The second thing you need to foster is being introspective about your games. Introspection is basically thinking about your games and reorganizing them into what you did well and what things you can improve on. Combined with high intensity, it can be a very powerful tool for developing awareness and your game knowledge. Look, when we're playing the game, we're often too overwhelmed to the point that we don't even know what the right decision is. It gets muddled in all of the crazy bullshit that's constantly happening. By allowing our mind to rest and analyze what's happened, 
what we felt during those moments, usually after like a break or something. It's an extremely powerful way to kickstart our brain's creative juices and allow it to find solutions that we couldn't find in the heat of the moment. This is where reviewing comes in. Recording your games and going through the moments where it felt like shit can also be a great way to help you with your introspection. Do it enough times and you'll start to make those correct decisions while you're in the game, simply because you've practiced it out of the game. At the end of the day guys, it's basic exposure therapy. The more you immerse yourself in that tough game state and rack your fucking brain to think of solutions, the more your brain will adapt to those circumstances. If you guys are having a hard time figuring out what the correct decision is, this is where champion guys, YouTube videos, and streams, and coaching can come into play. All of these things can help you accelerate your learning curves and give you insights where you wouldn't have been able to find it for yourself. I have a small coaching setup in my Discord too, so if you're interested, join and hit me up for more details. Moving on, the third and final step in this process is my OPAT method. OPAT is basically one problem at a time and it's crucial for you guys to understand this mindset. Now, OPAT is generally a good strategy in life, but when it comes to climbing with zero fucking talent, it's quite broken actually. This is because as untalented individuals, there's already a metric ton of shit we must work on and keep working on if we wanna see improvement in the long term. There's a myriad of different paths to go down that can all improve our skill, so it can be quite difficult to figure out which ones to do first. It doesn't really matter what you pick as long as you stick to what you picked. You'll make so much headway in your league climb if you're able to fully learn one particular concept, mindset, or playstyle within the game instead of bunny hopping between all of them. It's similar to having a small champion pool in that regard. The smaller your focus is, the greater your ability to explore that champion will be. Through a combination of playing high intensity games, then introspecting and reviewing what you did right and wrong in those games, and finally picking one thing you could work on and focusing on it over time allows you to gradually increase your mental RAM over time. There is no secret to doing this guys. For those of you who don't don't have any natural talent like me, it's just gonna take grit and perseverance to consistently see results. With enough time following the fundamentals and increasing your mental RAM, you'll slowly be able to climb and retain your rank simply because you're now able to track more things happening in the game. For us non-talented folks, it really comes down to how much we love learning the game and expressing ourselves within it. If you really, really give a fuck about this shit, I'm confident it'll work out for you eventually. Anyone, even a non-talented gamer like me, can break out of their slumps and get what they wanted. Don't let your lack of talent stop you from from enjoying the game and finding meaning through League of Legends. Anyone can do it. Anyone can get diamond.